Next on KCAU 9, overworked during the pandemic, many nurses are now putting work on hold, what it means for health care. Plus, a more than century old tradition continues in Winnebago. And get ready, get set, ride. Cyclists converge on Lamar's for Rag Ride 48. Next on KCAU 9 News at 10. We are Siouxland Proud. This is KCAU 9 News at 10. And good evening on a Friday night. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Seaman. And I'm Sophie Erber. While many aspects of life have returned to normal after the pandemic, healthcare workers are still facing new challenges. KCAU 9 reporter Nick Wilson talks to professionals about the challenges that they're still up against. In our top story at 10. Certified nursing assistants, or CNAs, are still recovering from the workload of the pandemic. Long-term care facilities struggled to retain new hires during the height of COVID-19. While the staff's work life is getting closer to normal, Vanessa Stowe, a restorative therapist at Stony Brook Suites Assisted Living, said a lot of CNAs felt burnt out from long hours. During COVID, we had a lot of turnover, um, a lot of burnout, definitely. We, I mean, all the girls were really overworked. Um, not to mention, you know, we did have some staff members that did have COVID, so it caused other staff members to work longer hours. The nursing home has 18 patients compared to 16 CNAs, and they hope retaining new employees will be easier as the pandemic slows down. Young people interested in the medical field are also keeping a close eye on whether or not colleges will offer in-person classes this fall. In Siouxland, the uncertainty has impacted college applications as students aren't sure what to expect this upcoming year. What we're seeing is a delay in the applications, that they're just needing more information from the colleges on how education is going to be delivered. They really went through a lot of changes last year. The college will have in-person classes this fall and all health programs will be open for enrollment. In Sioux City, Nick Wilson, KCAU 9 News. After more than a year, Iowa's public health disaster emergency declaration has been extended once again. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds signing a new proclamation extending emergency measures originally set to expire July 25th now set through August 22nd. A limited number of provisions will be allowed to expire earlier than that date. Meanwhile, as the Delta variant spreads here in Iowa, fewer Iowans are getting COVID-19 tests. The demand dropped so much over the past few months that the state closed all of its test Iowa centers last week. This is their alternative now, COVID-19 test kits that you can get mailed right to your home by filling out a request form on the Test Iowa website. You can also pick them up at designated checkpoints across the state, but they do ask that you call the site in advance. Once you get your test, you're asked to follow the instructions and then email it to the state hygienics lab. So how long does it all take, you might ask. A reporter at our sister station in Des Moines requested a kit last Friday. It arrived on Tuesday of this week, but it didn't have everything she needed to complete the test inside. Test Iowa had her pick up another kit for a location in Polk County. And after mailing that in, she got her results back in 24 hours. The U.S. government has purchased an additional 200 million doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said that the doses will go for future vaccination needs, including for children under the age of 12 and for possible booster shots. Now, some of the same areas of the nation that lagged vaccinations are now COVID hotspots. The White House is encouraging vaccine holdouts to reconsider getting that shot. The first round of the new child tax credit payments went out this week, but not everyone has gotten theirs yet. If you file taxes and the IRS has your information, the money should automatically deposit into your bank account. But if it hasn't, here's a checklist to make sure that you get the funds. Now, the rollout last week did have some hiccups, so give it another few days, I guess, if you're expecting a direct deposit. There could also be a delay if you filed your 2020 tax returns late. If you did not file taxes during the past few years, you'll have to sign up through the IRS website. On the IRS's site, you can also make sure that your mailing address as well as your banking information are all current. 
Meanwhile, the Biden administration is announcing several initiatives to try and crack down on crime nationwide. Attorney General Merrick Garland is in Chicago tonight to discuss the recent uptick there in crime and shootings in the Windy City. The trip comes as the Department of Justice launches task forces in five cities nationwide, which aims to identify the sources of illegal guns and corridors, along with the networks they travel in, to hopefully stop criminals from getting their hands on them. While overall violent crime remains lower than it was one decade ago, in cities across our country, homicides and shootings have spiked from the same period last year. Closing arguments in a Sioux City murder trial were interrupted today after the accused agreed to a plea deal. 36-year-old Roderick Banks pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter and a felon in possession of a firearm after originally pleading not guilty to charges of first-degree murder. According to court documents, Banks shot Solomon Blackbird in November of 2020 at the Park Place Apartments. Police have described the incident as a drug-related case. Banks fled Sioux City and was arrested in Alabama earlier this year. He now faces up to 20 years in prison. A body was pulled from the Missouri River this morning. A boater spotted that body about a mile north of the Dakota City boat ramp. That was around 9.30 a.m. Sioux City Fire Rescue has identified that body, but his name will not be released until next of kin can be notified. They say he was approximately 31 years old. That boater was able to stay with the, the body floating uh, until Sioux City Fire Rescue boats could make it to the scene and recover the body from the water. That man's cause of death is still being investigated. Google adds that he does not match any missing persons files in Sioux City. The Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska kicked off its 155th powwow earlier this afternoon. And KCAU 9's Dylan Adams tells us why this year was so special, even for those who couldn't be there in person. Tim and Sophie, after last year's powwow was canceled due to COVID-19, tribal members from across the country flocked to Winnebago today to celebrate their culture but also life creeping back to normal. The powwow at Winnebago Veterans Park looked a little different this year. There was still plenty of dancing, singing, and drumming, and it was still free to get in, but attendees also had to prove they'd been fully vaccinated. The communications director of the tribe spoke about the importance of having the event after a year away. I know not everybody could attend because uh, some um, haven't been vaccinated, but that was the decision that the veterans wanted to make to try to keep everybody in our community safe. And a special guest also made this powwow unique. Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts came to tour the reservation and the park and thanked everyone for the invite to such a spectacle. I want to say thank you to the veterans. I want to say thank you to the men and women who serve in our nation's uniform and to really thank you again for allowing me to see this great celebration of Winnebago culture and heritage. The annual powwow commemorating the return of Chief Little Priest is important to Winnebago's community. We couldn't gather, we couldn't come together, we couldn't uh, see each other smile and hear each other laugh. And uh, Winnebago people and, and all the other nations understand that that's medicine, we're medicine to each other. And of course, the singing and dancing contests will go on throughout the weekend with drum groups coming from as far as Canada and California to compete for prizes. All the fun continues tomorrow with grand entry set for 1 p.m. And I was told that those who are not able to attend this year's powwow for whatever reason can still tune in to a live stream on the Winnebago Tribe's Facebook page and their YouTube channel. Dylan Adams, KCAU 9 News. Downtown Sioux City continues to see a revitalization of sorts. New businesses opening up where old ones no longer exist on Historic First. That's right. Fourth. Those uh, yes, Historic Fourth, Fourth Street. Street among those businesses is Art Sioux. That's a new gallery that has more than 20 local artists showing off their work inside there. It's located on Fourth Street. That's right next to the new Hardline Coffee location. And right outside that gallery's grand opening, a concert. That's right, Downtown Live on Fridays, continuing through its summer concert series. Today, a uh, show at the, there is a should, show, I should say, at the end of each week. This week's show, Dustin Arbuckle and the Damn Nations were performing. By the way, uh, if you haven't seen the show and you'd like to, you need to hurry. Artists on this stage only for a few more weeks. If anything, the last year showed us as a community how important it is to have events going on, even if it is just live music like this and hanging out and sitting and listening to music together, like, that's so important. 
In fact, just two more concerts left for the Downtown Live series. That's right. Those concerts are not free. They are uh, charged minimally. You do have to pay to get in. If you'd like, you can find the fees, concert times, plus upcoming artists on their website. That's downtownlivesc.com, which we will post on our website, siouxlandproud.com. I believe for those wondering, uh, the fee is about $3 yeah, a pretty, person. Pretty minimal. It's minimal, yeah. I'm guessing that they probably had more revenue today from the beverages they <laughs> sold than the tickets they so. sold. Right, yeah. that's usually how that goes. And uh, a night truly to enjoy being outside, but also making sure that you're staying hydrated. And, and I do mean also putting some water in your system right. on a it's night H2O, like this. H2O now and then, not a bad idea. Right. Yeah. It's going to be really hot for quite a long time, Tim and Sophie. This is really just the beginning of it. We're looking outside here now from the Ho-Chunk Center camera in downtown Sioux City, where temperatures still exceed 80 degrees. And overhead, we have the full moon. The buck moon is currently visible. Here's a look at our high temperatures throughout the area today. Upper 80s to middle 90s. 95, the high temperature this afternoon in O'Neill, 94 degrees in Yankton, 93 in Norfolk. High temperature today was 93 degrees also in Sioux City. That's the hottest temperature that we've seen so far this month. And it's also the hottest temperature the first time we've been in the 90s since July the 5th. 88, the high temperature today in Storm Lake, 91 in Denison, and a high temperature today of 95 in Omaha. Here's a look at what's happening now in Sioux City. Our temperature is measured at 83 degrees. We have the wind from the south at 8 miles per hour. That was fairly strong this afternoon. It's eased off some. Currently, the relative humidity is 63%, and the dew point is hanging near 70. Here's a look at our temperatures throughout the Midwest. Very warm outside, 70s and 80s. Blanket the map. It's now 86 in Minneapolis, 83 degrees in Lincoln, 73 degrees degrees out to the west in Valentine. Zooming in closer to home here, temperatures in the upper 70s to middle 80s. It's 85 in Sioux Falls, 79 degrees in Denison now, 78 in Norfolk. Checking in with a temperature of 84 in Omaha and 75 in Storm Lake. The wind is blowing in from the south. We have it sustained between 5 and 10 miles per hour. It looks like it's going to be somewhat breezy again tomorrow, but the wind is going to flip to the north. Despite the fact that the wind will be from the north, it really doesn't look to cool off our temperatures too much. Here's a look at our radar picture now. It shows that we do have some showers and thunderstorms that are organizing off to our northwest. You can also see that we have one isolated severe thunderstorm there just east of Valentine, Nebraska. As these storms continue to move into our neck of the woods, they should not be severe. But again, it does look like we will have some brief rain happen for tomorrow morning as this is going to take a little bit of time to work in. Checking the stormcast, then it shows that temperatures between 105 and 110. So get ready for some major heat next week. Cooling off a touch as we head into next weekend, a chance of some more storms happening on Thursday. We've had a whole lot of beautiful sunrise and sunset pictures. This one comes to us from Jim in Storm Lake. Thank you for getting that shot. If you have one that you want to share, go to SiouxLandProud.com, find the weather tab and send us your photos. Maybe you want to get a picture of that buck moon. Is currently bright overhead. I love. Uh, should we tell our viewers again why it's a buck moon? Because it's, you did explain it last night. Yeah, it's when the antlers of the male deer are growing at their fastest rate. It's when they're starting to get large, so it gets hunters pretty excited. I bet. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for that bit of trivia, Scott. Sure. And the Olympics are underway, as we know. That means dozens of athletes striving for Olympic gold. But for those who fall short, is bronze better than silver? We'll take a look at a new study coming up. But first, Rag Rag doesn't get into gear until Sunday, but that didn't stop early birds who rolled into town. Here from riders ready for the race next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Erber, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson, and Sports Director Jake Jones. This is KCAU 9 News at 10. KCAU. It's estimated that some 15,000 cyclists are making their way to the ice cream capital of the world. It's all ahead of Ragbri 48. And dozens of them are already in town camping out at the Plymouth County Fairgrounds. Right, hopefully eating some of that ice cream too in town there. KCAU 9's Hannah Adamson caught up with a few of the early birds and shares their thoughts ahead of the big ride. Hannah? Tim and Sophie, the early birds I spoke with, say they cannot wait to get out on the road after Ragbri was postponed last year due to COVID-19. And for many of them, the ride itself is the second long journey they'll take as part of the Ragbri experience. 
I started this ride in Seattle, Washington about a month plus ago. Tucson, Arizona. We're from New Hampshire and Maine, and it was quite a trek to get out here. I'm from Las Vegas. This is our first rag bri. This is my sixth time, and then uh, multiple times for everybody else in the group. He did it first in 2019. This is my ride number 17. This is my going to be my third year doing it, and I hope to keep doing it as long as I can. The, the first impress is the, the ice cream. The ice cream. <laughs> store really really good and i have tried the ice cream and and it's good ice cream is on the agenda popcorn is on the agenda well we're looking for ice cream that's what we're looking for right dave yeah. <laughs> we're, looking, yeah, we're looking for ice cream we look forward to the corn the corn that we had back in 2019 was phenomenal yeah, it was it's a lot of miles and there's a lot of heat and humidity this week so it'll be a good challenge hydrate 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 it's a little hot today no <laughs> i think the rest of the week the same but it's okay it's fun when you love the bike you forget everything and make sure you're aware of your surroundings and you're aware of your people that are riding next to you concentrate on the next five miles ten miles have a lot of fun stop eat play uh, don't focus that you have another 50 or 60 miles to go. Be methodical when you're biking and you'll get through it every day. Have fun and uh, keep uh, plenty of fresh ice in the beer cooler. Thank you to the folks of Iowa. Woohoo! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> I noticed a few cyclists on Highway 75 North heading into Lamar's today, so be sure if you're driving in the area this weekend to keep a close eye out for those riders. In the meantime, we have all you need to know about this year's RAGBRAI and RAGBRAI Expo on our website, SueLandProud.com or the KCAU 9 News app right now. Tim? Important, Hannah. The folks do keep their eyes open. A lot of bikes on the roads this weekend. Well, after spending months deployed as part of a Kosovo Force NATO mission, members of the 113th Cavalry headquartered here in Sioux City are back in town. About 100 soldiers from the 1st Squadron were honored during a formal welcome home ceremony at the Sioux City Airport. Due to COVID-19, the soldiers' send-off did not allow for an in-person ceremony. Their return home today, if you could tell, there was much different. With family members and friends all there to offer support and congratulations. Guard members have been away on a peacekeeping mission for more than 360 days. Actually, the hardest part of the mission was being away from uh, family. So. so what is the first thing you're going to do together as a family? Relax, hang out, and eat some pizza. <laughs> the troops were part of the single largest Iowa National Guard mobilization mission since 2004. A new study from the University of Iowa tonight is diving into the mindset of Olympic medalists, and research suggests that bronze might actually be better than silver. Those researchers examined photos of 413 athletes at different medal ceremonies in the Olympic Games between 2000 and 2016. Then they used software that can read a person's facial expression and found that bronze medalists are more likely to be smiling than those who placed second. We'll take a deeper dive into the study tomorrow when those researchers actually talk to uh, some of our affiliates. We might be able to bring you that story. And if I have to analyze this, you know, psychologically speaking, maybe the bronze medalists are grateful that they got on the podium, whereas the silver medalists are just upset they didn't get gold. At least uh, I'm trying to channel my inner athlete. It's been a while. But. I think it's another one of those surveys that somebody doesn't have enough time <laughs> Some computer hands. doesn't really understand. Time. Yeah, too much <laughs> time on their hands. Nothing's yeah. ever going to top, though, and I hope they put it through that facial recognition. The girl who did the, uh, like, Oh, yeah, she looked ago. wildly disappointed yeah. with yeah. any medal. That, that was a good one. That was so. a great one. Uh, the exes coming <laughs> off a great one. Big yes, win they last were. night. Getting in town with this upcoming heat wave. Question is, could Sioux City heat up with the weather? I've got the answer still to come after the break. Denison had been the team's offensive line and run game coordinator for the last two seasons. The NFL requires all of its coaches, front office members, equipment managers, and scouts to all be vaccinated as Tier 1 individuals unless there is a religious or serious medical reason for not receiving it. Although players do not have to receive the vaccine, if they are not vaccinated and are the cause of an outbreak that forces a game's cancellation, both of those teams will not be receiving game checks as a result. Mm. Yeah, it, it's essentially a, a forfeit, right? A loss. Yeah, yeah. I mean, both teams take the L, and uh, obviously 
You don't play a game, you can't get the game Lost in the pocketbook, too, yeah. apparently. Oh, yeah. yeah, and that's the tough part. All right, thanks, Jake. We check in for a final forecast. First, to take you outside right now in Siouxland.